Hey everyone, welcome to Variables and Operators Lecture. So variables act as a container or box for a Python object, which can include a number, a string, a list, or a dictionary, or really any other Python object. So here we have an example where we have variable underscore box equal to 100. We print it out and we get the output of 100. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our own variables. So first off, if I type in here, let's say var, and do shift and enter, we get a name error. And that's because the var has not yet been defined. So we just simply define it by putting an equal sign here. We do shift and enter now. You can see we have the output of 10. I can also override this value. And you can see now we have two instead of 10. Okay, so as you recall, we have at the example at the beginning, we had variable underscore box. So I can do here var box. Of course, I have to assign a value here. Let's put in say 100. Now this is what's called the snake case syntax. So snake case syntax. And the reason why it's called snake is because it has an underscore here. So it gives it kind of like the look of a snake. Whereas if we were to have another language like JavaScript, it would be like this. And this is what's called camel case syntax. And it's typically used in things like JavaScript, another programming language. So if you want to assign your variables, make sure you have it as a snake case, not a camel case when it comes to using Python. Okay, so the other thing to bear in mind is you can actually have a variable that's equal to nothing. So if I do var2, now I can't just do this. That's going to give me an error, but I can do it like this. We can put it to equal to none. And if I do var2 and the output is going to be well nothing and I can check if it's nothing by doing equal equal to none and we'll look at the comparison operators and equality operators in more detail in a second but if I do this you can see the output is true okay and I can also do here a type var2 and it gives me none type okay and then after that I can also of course override the value and let's do 300 and we have var2 of 300 here Okay, so the other thing to bear in mind is, let's say for example, I want to have multiple variables assigned on a single line. So I can do X, Y, and Z, and I can do equal to 25 minus 50, and I can do, let's say 9.12345. And you can see here X, 25, I can actually just do a print, x, y, and z. As you can see here, we have all of the values, the integer, a negative integer, and a float value here. And what I can also do is check if they are the integer or a float. So I can do a type, I want to do here x, and that's going to be an integer. And similarly, I can do the same with the y, which of course is an integer as well, and a z or z, and it's a float. It's a float because of course it has these decimal numbers here on the end. Now what I can do is actually convert them into the opposite. So I can convert a float into an integer or an integer into a float. So we can do that. Let's do int for c. Okay, so you can see it's nine instead of the 9.12345. And similarly, I can do the same with a float for let's say x and it's gonna be, it's gonna be 25.0. And lastly, let's say I want to convert the y, which is currently a negative value, I want to put it to a positive value. So we'll just simply do abs and then y. You can see it's no longer a negative value. Okay, so there's an alternative approach to assigning values in a single line. And it's not commonly used anyway, but I'll just show it. And that is if I do a equals 10, and then we put in here a semicolon, b equals 20, c equals 30, and then I can just of course do prints a b and c like so okay that's not a very Pythonic way of actually assigning variables it's normally done on lines like this separate lines but that's just to show you that you can do that if you wish to save some space okay and then let's take a look at numbers in a bit more detail so for example let's say I have a very large number we'll do a large number of let's say like this, so that is 1,500,000. So we have 1.5 million. Now it's very difficult to actually read this. So a way to resolve that issue 
is one of two ways. One I could do, let's do two, and we'll have one like this. And you can see if I do large, large number two, run that, you can see we get the exact same output. Alternatively, let's say instead of typing this out, which is quite long, what I can do is I can simply do, we'll do this as large number three, 1.5e to the power of six. And this will give me the, let's put this one here, three. This gives me the exact same output, but as a float. But if we were to compare the two numbers, so let's do large number two and large number three, equal, equal, we get true because they're essentially the same. Even though this one here, large number two is an integer and large number three is a float. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. So there are different types of operators used in Python. They are mathematical, Boolean, comparison, and membership. So let's take a look at the mathematical operators. So what we have here with this example is you can see that we have addition, subtraction, multiply, power, division, floor division, and modulus. So let's take a look at an example where we have here a variable equal to 10. And if I run this, it's gonna be just showing you the outputs for each of the mathematical operators. So of course, with this one, we have 10 plus two is of course 12, 10 minus two is eight, 10 multiplied by two is 20. Then this one we have as a float value where 10 is divided by two. But if you don't want a float value, then you can do the floor division, which is this print statement here. We have the two slashes. And then we have here the power. So it's simply 10 to the power of two, which is simply 10 times 10, which gives you 100. And this last one here is modulus, and it gives you an output of zero. So what it's asking is basically, how many times does the number two fit into the number 10, which is gonna be, of course, five, and it leaves you no remainder. Let's say, for example, we get rid of these twos, and I'm going to just hold the control button and then just left click. And instead, we're gonna use a variable. So let's have X. And I'll define x, we'll just do a semicolon. x equals, let's say, three this time. And this is better practice than using just all those numbers of two because it's repeating yourself and you want to avoid that. And with this, I can just simply change the x to any value I like and that gives me an entirely different output. So let's run this. Okay, so you can see here we have the float value of 3.33, which is for the division. And then with the floor division, we just have an integer of three. This one we have with the power, which is 10 times 10 times 10, which gives you a thousand. And then this one we have a modulus remainder of one because the number three fits into the number 10 three times, which leaves you a remainder of one. Okay, so let's take a look at the next example. So here we have the Boolean operators for Python. And here we have true, which is equivalent to one, and then false, which is equivalent to zero. And with these two booleans, the distinction with Python is that unlike other programming languages, they both have the true and false capitalized. Whereas with, for example, JavaScript, the true and false are lowercase. Then we also have the and and or operators. I'm gonna see how they work later on in this lecture. And then we have the not operator. And all it does is simply reverse the Boolean value. So for example, we have not true is gonna be equal to false, which is gonna be equal to not one. And likewise, when we do the opposite, not false, it's gonna be equal to true, which is equal to not zero. Okay, so let's take a look at this print statement. So we're gonna print these out. I'm just gonna run it now. Okay, so you can see here with the print of true and false, we get false. So every time we have an and operator here, and we have a true and false, it's always gonna be false. Likewise, when we have the output of true here, when we have the print statement of true or false, it's always gonna pick the true, as you can see here. And of course you just have the print statements of true and false, and then you have the opposite here, so the inverse. And if I were to do here, let's say, true equal equal to one, we get true. If I put in some other number, let's say 10, we get false. Okay, and if I put in, let's say, false equal equal to zero, we get true. If I put in some other number here, we get false. Okay, so you can see that they're both numerically equivalent to one and zero respectively.
And let's take a look at the membership operators. Okay, so you can see here we have the in and not in, which of course the not just reverses it or does the inverse. So here we have three strings, X, Y, and Z. And let's say, for example, we want to check if a particular letter is in the house. So if I do O in X, and we get, of course, true, because there is an O in the house string. But let's say I put in here, let's do T, we're gonna get false. If I do not in, we get true. And if I do, let's say, O again, we get false, because obviously, O actually is in the house. And let's say I do another one, I can do C in, and we'll do Y, and we get true. And I can do the opposite again, not in, and we get false. Okay, so let's take a look at the next operator. So here we have the comparison Python operators. So of course, if you're familiar with mathematics, you're gonna be familiar with this sign here, which is the greater than. We have the greater than or equal to, and then we have the less than, and then we have the less than or equal to, and then we have the equality sign, so we're checking between two variables that are equal to each other, and then the opposite here, where they're not equal to. Okay, so for example, let's say I run this code here. So I have x equal to 25, and we have also the number 25 we're comparing to. So we just run that, you can see the outputs are that we have false, so x is not gonna be greater than 25 because x is 25. So that's gonna evaluate to false. X is not greater than 25, but it is equal to 25. Therefore we have true as the output here. And then with this one, where we have X less than 25, of course that's gonna be false as well because it can't be less than itself. And then X less than or equal to, well, it's not less than, but it is gonna be true because it is equal to. And then we have here equal equal to, which of course is gonna be true. And then not equal to is gonna be false. Okay, so let's take a look at the comparison operators in a bit more detail with what's called chain operators. So here you can see I have three variables, X, Y, and Z. So I have 100,000, I have 4,000, and I have a float of 2.5. So what we can do is we can put them in parentheses. Okay, so I have X equal equal to, let's do, instead of putting this value here, I'm going to put in, let's say, E to the power of five and y is less than let's say 10 and we get of course false here because y is not going to be less than 10 and then i'll do here or and i put in let's say type z equal equal to a float which it is and x is greater than 50 which of course is true and we'll get an output of true because we have the or operator here. If I change this to and, it's gonna be false. Okay, and I can continue on with this. And what I can do is actually put this on another line. So I'll do a backslash and then I'll put in and, and we'll put in let's say 10 greater than two and five equal equal to five. Okay, so you can see it's still false because we have these and operators here. But if I put in an or, you can see we have true here. And we can continue on and on with this kind of approach. Okay, so that concludes my lecture on variables and operators. I hope that's been insightful, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks.